वन मेडिकल कंडीशन दैट हैज़ बिन मेकिंग हेडलाइंस एंड अफेक्टिंग पीपल ऑफ ऑल एज ग्रुप्स इट कैन स्ट्राइक सडनली एंड कैन बी लाइफ थ्रेटनिंग Every year there are millions of individuals who are diagnosed with this disease and it has claimed a lot of lives. We as doctors while providing a routine treatment to our patient can encounter this and lose our patient's precious life. It can become all scary but the surprising fact is it can often be managed and the lives can be saved. Hello everyone. Welcome to the series on medical emergencies in dental practice. Today I will be discussing about angina and myocardial infarction. As usual, let's start with some basics. Angina pectoris is derived from Latin words angina meaning spasmodic, cramp-like, choking feeling or suffocating pain and pectoris meaning chest. While myocardial infarction is a clinical syndrome characterized by severe and prolonged substernal pain caused by cardiac ischemia and damage to myocardial cells. Now coming to the classification angina can be grouped as stable variant and unstable angina stable angina involves transient episodic chest discomfort typically predictable and reproducible it is provoked by physical or psychological stress and results spontaneously on taking rest or nitroglycerin the frequency of attacks remain constant over time Variant angina also called prince metals atypical or vasospastic angina occurs more likely at rest and at odd times during day or night it is caused by coronary artery spasm and is often associated with dysrhythmia or conduction defects unstable angina or pre infarction or crescendo angina presents with at least one of the three symptoms it can occur at rest or with minimal exertion and lasts for more than 20 minutes if not interrupted by nitroglycerin the pain is severe often described as frank pain and of new onset such as within a month there is a crescendo pattern that is more severe prolonged or frequent pain than the previous attack myocardial infarction can be grouped as st segment elevation or non st segment elevation acute mi In ST segment elevation the ST interval in ECG is prolonged in at least two contiguous leads there is usually complete occlusion of an epicardial coronary artery while non ST elevation often results from incomplete occlusion or spontaneous lysis of the thrombus it is associated with a higher incidence of reinfarction and recurrent ischemia now coming to the clinical manifestation Both the condition manifest as chest discomfort or pain. There is the Levine sign, a universal sign of ischemic chest pain, wherein the patient holds a clenched fist over the chest while describing the pain. The patient describes the anginal pain as squeezing, bursting, pressing, tightness, heaviness, burning, choking or crushing. While in MI, the pain is described as intolerable intense sensation much like a pressure or weight on the chest or deep ache within the chest it is located substernally middle or just left to the mid sternal region the pain radiates as ache numbness or tingling discomfort to the left shoulder and medial aspect of the left arm following distribution of the ulnar nerve or sometimes as constricting sensation to the left side of the neck and mandible The duration of discomfort in angina is almost always brief while in MI it may last for 30 minutes to several hours if untreated. Angina pectoris gets relieved within 2 to 4 minutes after administration of nitroglycerin while MI is commonly managed through administration of opioid analgesics such as morphine or nitrous oxide and oxygen. In angina the patient may sit lie or stand still to avoid any activity that would increase their discomfort while in mi patients are frequently quite restless moving around in a futile attempt to find a more comfortable position although the signs and symptoms of angina and mi are very specific but sometimes other diseases can also produce similar manifestations and it is important to differentiate them The musculoskeletal pain is normally localized and does not radiate. It is increased on breathing 
and movement while it is relieved by application of heat or mild analgesic. Pain associated with pericarditis is oppressive in nature, occurs in the mid-sternum, aggravates on breathing and swallowing and is relieved when the patient bends forward from the waist. It is also associated with fever before the onset of pain. Esophagitis can present as substernal or epigastric burning pain precipitated by eating or lying down after meal and relieved by antiacids. It is often associated with acid reflux into the mouth. Pulmonary embolism presents as sudden severe chest pain commonly associated with coughing up of blood tinged sputum. In dissecting aortic aneurysm, there is sudden acute severe chest pain often greatest at onset. It spreads up and down the chest and back over a period of hours and may rapidly lead to death. Acute indigestion presents as sharp knife-like pain that increases in intensity with breathing. Now coming to the management part. Management can be described in 5 steps. Step 1. Termination of all dental procedures and activation of the medical emergency services. Step 2. Positioning of the patient in a comfortable semi-reclined position. Step 3. Assessment of circulation, airway and breathing and monitoring vital signs. Step 4 involves definitive care with administration of oxygen and emergency drugs. And step 5 involves shifting the patient to an emergency care facility. The first emergency drug to be administered is nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin tablet 0.3 to 0.6 mg is to be placed under the tongue allowed to dissolve and absorb through the sublingual mucosa. The dose can be repeated every 5 minutes as required but not more than 3 doses. Alternatively, 1 to 2 meter dose of nitroglycerin spray can be given initially but not more than 3 meter doses is recommended within a period of 15 minutes. Some important points to note about nitroglycerin are it is indicated only when the systolic blood pressure is at least 90 mmHg or diastolic is 50 mmHg. If the discomfort is relieved after first or second dose, assume angina is in progress, the oxygen should be tapered slowly over 5 minutes and the dental treatment modified to prevent recurrence. If the discomfort is relieved after the third dose, the patient should be referred for medical evaluation before any further dental treatment. If the discomfort is not relieved even after the third dose of nitroglycerin, assume MI is in progress. In such case, other emergency drugs such as aspirin and morphine are recommended. An IV line with a crystalloid solution such as 5% dextrose at 30 ml per hour should be started. 325 mg non-enteric coated aspirin tablets are recommended to be chewed and swallowed. It is indicated for all patients with suspected acute MI or unstable angina as it prevents platelet aggregation and thrombus formation. It is contraindicated in case of known aspirin allergy or active gastrointestinal hemorrhage. Morphine sulfate is given 2 to 5 mg IV every 5 to 30 minutes. It is recommended if there is persistent pain and severe discomfort. It should not be re-administered if the respiratory rate is less than breaths per minute or the systolic blood pressure falls below 90 mmHg or diastolic below 50 mmHg. The patient should be transferred to an emergency care facility in case acute myocardial infarction is suspected or when the discomfort is not relieved after 20 minutes of appropriate therapy. During the transport, 50-50 concentration of nitrous oxide and oxygen can be given as it provides a gaseous analgesic with little effect on blood pressure and an enriched source of oxygen. At last, some important pointers to remember. Patients with unstable angina represents ASA4 category and should not undergo elective dental treatment. The American Heart Association recommends that a patient with previously unrecognized coronary artery disease should seek medical assistance if suspicious chest pain persists for 2 minutes or longer. Elective dental care 
or any minimally invasive procedure should be avoided for at least 6 months after an episode of acute mi nitrates in all forms are contraindicated in patients with initial systolic blood pressure less than 90 mmhg or less than 30 mmhg below their baseline and in patients taking phosphodiesterase inhibitors if nitroglycerin is unavailable or proves ineffective calcium channel blockers such as nifedipine virapamil or diltiazem can be administered naloxone an opioid antagonist should be available whenever opioids are used that was all about angina and acute myocardial infarction however it is recommended to refer the updated and standard guidelines regularly to keep yourself up to date with the emergency protocols in the upcoming video i will take on another medical emergency and its management till then if you found the video helpful and informative then do like the video share it with your friends and subscribe the channel for more such videos also you can download our app for more details and notes on dental and medical topics